Hey, it's Shane from GotRom.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you several of the most popular stretches for hip impingement, and I'm gonna rank them best to worst. Stay tuned. So how do we determine which hip impingement stretch is the best and which is the worst? Well, my ranking criteria is basically the stretches that give you the most instant pain relief and have the least risk of making things worse are the best, and the ones that have the highest risk of actually irritating something and you probably won't move and feel better afterwards are the worst. So with that said, let's get into the first stretch. So the number one stretch, my favorite, is the standing band distracted hamstring stretch. So the first thing you're gonna do is get a thick green band attach it to a pole or some kind of immovable thing that's not gonna fall over when it has a lot of tension on the band. And then you step through, put it on your high quad, face forward, the band is gonna be distracting backwards or slightly laterally is okay too. And then you come up into a standing position. You're gonna scoot forward to get a little bit of tension on the band, a little distraction. This is pulling my hip deeper into the socket and there's less of a risk of hip impingement compared to traditional forward fold hamstring stretches. So from here, with my fingertips on the ground, I'm going to take a deep breath, get tight, just squeeze everything in this area, and then on an exhale, relax. Get tight, relax. I like to use this foot to kind of paw at the ground or slide my foot into the ground in this direction. So I hold my breath, I'm pawing with my foot, I'm sliding my foot, hold it, relax. I also can bend forward more, I can lean out to the side, breathe and relax. You're gonna get different angles and different uh, stretches on your hamstrings by moving around. So don't be mechanical about it. Flow between different positions. When you find a, a tight line, a tight band, stop, breathe and relax. Exhale and sink deeper into the stretch. The advantage of using the band is that it puts your hip deeper into the socket, and so you're not gonna risk that impingement feeling that people often feel when they do stretches for the hamstring without the band. So this is why it's my number one stretch for hip impingement. The next best stretch for hip impingement is the band distracted hip capsule mobilization, or also known as the band distracted hip centration exercise. What does that mean, hip centration? Putting your hip in the center of the socket, which improves all ranges of motion of the hip. So here's how it looks like. The band is hooked up, same position as the first stretch. You're going to scoot forward until you get some good tension on the band. The more you scoot forward, the more it's going to pull your hip into the back of the socket but you're not going to collapse into a pigeon pose type stretch. You're going to stay very far forward. Notice my torso is way up and out in front of me. And then I come down to maybe my elbows and I can put my foot behind this knee if I wanna do a little external rotation of the hip, or I can even put it on this side of the band for a little bit of internal rotation of the hip. And what I'm looking for is to get all of my body weight balanced over this bone and when I'm doing it right, it feels like all of my weight is balanced on top of this knee. The main mistake that I see people make in this particular exercise is they go into way too much hip flexion too soon. And even though the band is helping to unimpinge you, if you go deep, deep, deep into hip flexion and you're dealing with hip impingement, you're gonna feel an impingement in your hips, obviously. So stay way, 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 way forward. Get all the pressure down through this bone search for a deep feeling of pressure in the back of the hips or a deep glute stretch and play around with these positions either rocking my hips out in this direction that feels nice for my hip breathing and relaxing or i can even come down to a shoulder and rest my head on the ground and i can use this hand to push even more to unimpinge myself and now i feel an even deeper feeling of pressure here in the hip socket breathing, relaxing, wiggling, spending minutes here, playing with different angles, different corners, different vectors, trying to get just the stretch that I'm looking for. 
The next position that I can move into is the hip in internal rotation. Internal rotation is a range of motion that's missing in a lot of people with hip impingement, and this will help restore it if you do it right. Again, you can come down to your elbow. For me, I like to get the pressure down through my knee. I feel like the bone is pressing up into my socket here. And then I really exaggerate pushing my hip out in this direction, like so. And the pressure is still going down through my knee. From here, I can just breathe and relax, or I can use PNF stretching, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, which basically just means contract and relax. So build up tension with a contraction, tight, 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 and then relax, wiggle around. So work on your hip external rotation, your hip internal rotation in these various positions. Make sure that you're not collapsing into this position and see what it does for your hip impingement. Moving on to some of the almost best stretches, we're gonna do the band distracted Cossack stretch. So with the band pulling your hip back, you're going to come on your hands and your knees and then bring this leg out to the side and then straighten your spine. I bring this foot across like this and I slowly sink back like so. Normally when people do this stretch, they complain about an outer hip pinch, but if you have enough band distraction pulling you back, it should unimpinge you here and allow you to get a high groin adductor stretch. So you're starting to notice a theme here. This band distraction helps hip impingement when you do it right. So we're gonna show you another exercise now for the glutes. I'm gonna switch legs, hooking it up to my thigh and I'm gonna put my foot on a wall. It'd be nice if I could scoot back more and get even more band distraction. So if this is the principle that I want you to remember is that the more distraction that you're getting with the band, the more it's going to unimpinge you in these positions. So try to find a way of setting up a band to a pole a little farther that way, and then do your typical glute stretches like so. This is a figure four glute stretch from yoga where you can thread the needle and go hands through here and then pull in this direction. Again, sometimes when people do glute stretches, they feel like they can't rotate the hip open like this, but the band pulling you in that direction and your hands assisting or your elbow assisting can unimpinge you and allow you maybe for the first time in your life to get a nice deep glute stretch without a hip impingement. So even though I've been praising the band distraction for all of these stretches, there is one band distracted stretch that I think does not help hip impingement. And here's what it is. You're going to flow into the next position, but I'm going to reposition the band. And this time I'm going to step over and through so that it's hooked up just below my glute on my high hamstring and I'm going to come in this position. You see this a lot in YouTube videos where people say that this is the best hip flexor stretch. But unfortunately for people with hip impingement, we often have something called anterior femoral glide, which means that your femur in the acetabulum glides forward and this band is going to exaggerate that and probably give you an uncomfortable feeling here in the front of the hip rather than a nice muscular hip flexor stretch. So to me, this is one of the exercises to avoid for hip impingement. We want the hip to be getting put deeper into the socket, not being glided forward in the socket. So moving on to the last really not so good stretch for hip impingement, we're gonna get rid of the band. So I'm going to step out, set that aside, and come to a position which you've probably seen in different places on YouTube, the 90-90 position where there's a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here, and then you're supposed to do various stretches and strengthening exercises here. This is my least favorite because most people with hip impingement don't have this kind of external rotation on their front hip, and they don't have this kind of internal rotation on their back hip. So doing this with no modification is gonna be one of my least favorite hip impingement stretches because you're gonna feel impinged on the front and pinching on the back and your spine is contorting and you're just not in a good position. And it's very likely that you're gonna make things worse. If you wanted to modify this by elevating yourself on a pillow or something, that would be an okay variation. 
but because you're likely to do it wrong and you're likely to hurt something while you're doing it, it's one of my lowest, least favorite exercises for hip impingement. So that is it. Some of the most popular stretches for hip impingement ranked best to worst. I hope that video was helpful. If you need a complete program to help you with your hip impingement, go to thefaifix.com. See you in the next video.